don't like losing. I don't like being like the like the second or I always want to be at the top. I don't want to be at the in the middle, the bottom average. I just want to always be the top. He's one of the most explosive and entertaining stars of his era. Oh, a unique talent whose demeanor and indomitable spirit scream, why not? Russ, throw it down! Throw it down, Russ! Down the middle he goes! A former MVP turned polarizing veteran. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? A stat-stuffing ball of energy who became synonymous with the triple-double. That's pretty interesting. From Long Beach to LA, and eventually Springfield. This is the story behind Russell Westbrook. Westbrook was born November 12, 1988 in Long Beach, California to Russell Westbrook Jr. and Shannon Horton. Growing up in Hawthorne in the Los Angeles metro area, young Westbrook had dreams of playing college ball at UCLA. However, those lofty ambitions didn't exactly seem attainable during Westbrook's early years at Losinger High School. The young Hooper was a mere 5 foot 8 and 140 pounds when he first walked into Losinger High and he didn't earn a starting spot on the varsity team until his junior year. At Losinger, Westbrook was in the shadow of star player and childhood friend Kelsey Bars, who shared Russell's dream of heading to UCLA together. But Bars died tragically of an enlarged heart at only 16 years old, leaving Westbrook to carry his torch and their dreams for him. In fact, the KB3 wristbands and Sharpie notes on his sneakers that Westbrook eventually adorned in the NBA are tributes to Bars. Westbrook grew to 6'3 between his junior and senior year, as he walked into his final year of high school looking more like the dynamic star NBA fans would eventually come to recognize. As a senior, Westbrook averaged better than 25 points, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, and 3 steals, leading the Olympians to a 25-4 record while finally attracting the attention of top college programs after receiving only one recruiting letter through his first three years of high school. There was only one college Russ had eyes for, though. UCLA finally came calling with a scholarship offer after guard Jordan Farmar left school for the NBA. The late blooming Westbrook had achieved his goal of becoming a Bruin, but there were bigger dreams to cook up now. It was hard to envision Westbrook as a future NBA superstar during his freshman season, as he averaged 3.4 points in just 9 minutes per game while backing up Darren Collison on a Bruins team that lost in the Final Four. An injury to Collison opened the door in Westbrook's sophomore season, however and Russ ran with it. UCLA's new starter averaged 12.7 points, 4.7 assists, and 1.6 steals, teaming with Kevin Love to once again lead the Bruins to the Final Four, earning Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year honors in the process. Suddenly, the one-time high school afterthought was a top NBA prospect. Westbrook declared for the 2008 draft, and the Seattle Supersonics, led by reigning Rookie of the Year Kevin Durant on their way to Oklahoma City, selected him fourth overall. In Durant and Westbrook, the rebranded Oklahoma City Thunder had their future foundation in place, but there would be some growing pains. Westbrook averaged roughly 15 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, and a steal as an NBA freshman, earning all rookie first team honors but he was woefully inefficient, and the Thunder lost 29 of their first 32 games during the 2008-2009 season. However, OKC grew into a more functional team over the course of Westbrook's rookie campaign, and after drafting James Harden in 2009, to add the beard to an enviable collection of young talent that already included Durant, Westbrook, Serge Ibaka, and Jeff Green, the Thunder were ready to rumble. Though his 16.1 points per game still weren't coming in efficient fashion, Westbrook grew as a playmaker and overall point guard in his sophomore season, averaging 8 assists while once again suiting up for all 82 games. The Thunder exploded for 50 wins in 2009-2010, with Oklahoma City hosting its first ever playoff games in a surprisingly hard-fought first-round series loss to the eventual champion Lakers. 
finds Westbrook, puts it up, and the buzzer off the rim, and the Lakers win and advance to the second round. A thriller here in Oklahoma City and a crushing defeat for the Thunder. And listen to these fans right away giving their team a standing ovation. Westbrook became more of a scorer and an all-star in year three, averaging 21.9 points and 8.2 assists for a 55-win Thunder team that advanced all the way to the Western Conference Finals, where they fell in five games to the eventual champion Mavericks. Within a couple of seasons, Oklahoma City had transformed from a hapless startup into a bona fide contender, with Durant and Westbrook establishing themselves as all NBA superstars, and Harden emerging as one of the league's best young talents off the bench. Comparisons to San Antonio's decorated big three of Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and super sub Manu Ginobili ran wild. Except, unlike the Spurs, the grand prize continually eluded the Thunder who came closest to a championship in the lockout-shortened 2011-2012 season, Westbrook's fourth as a pro. The then 23-year-old put together another All-Star and All-NBA second team campaign, with the Thunder, almost poetically, rallying back from a 2-0 series deficit against the aforementioned Spurs to get over the hump and make their first NBA Finals. Though OKC ultimately fell to LeBron James's heat in the 2012 Finals, Westbrook continued adding to his rapidly expanding resume. In the Thunder's lone win of that championship series, Westbrook poured in 27 points and 11 assists, becoming the first player since Michael Jordan to record at least 25 points and 10 assists in his Finals debut. Pull up jumper, it's good! 10 point lead for the Thunder. Despite the loss to Miami, which also included a 43 point Westbrook performance in game four, many believed it was only the first of many finals appearances for the Durant Westbrook Harden trio, and perhaps even the first of many June matchups against the Heat. The Thunder were billed as the good guys in a hyped clash of built versus bought as Miami had benefited from James's and Chris Bosh's free agency decisions to join Dwayne Wade in one of the league's marquee destinations. That rivalry was short-lived though. Harden was traded to Houston in the summer of 2012 after a contract dispute, and the Thunder slowly came apart at the seams. The first post-Harden blow saw Westbrook sidelined by a knee injury early in the 2013 playoffs derailing a 60-win, top-seeded Thunder team while fueling what would become a decade-long feud with Patrick Beverly. From the rim, pick up that garbage. 42-41, and Westbrook hobbling away. Beverly went for the steal just as the timeout was called, and he actually got part of the knee of Russell Westbrook. He is really upset with Beverly right now. The game. Scott Brooks wants to call a timeout, and Beverly again in Westbrook. They've got a history of this. Uh, Russell, things got a little contentious between you and, and uh, Patrick Beverly. Can you talk about you know kind of what happened there? Oh yeah, he was talking about he was first team all defense, but I I I, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about because I had 42 at the time. But now it shocked me because he said he looked up and said, "No, what can garbage? You know, I got 40 points. I'm like, that's nice. He took 34 shots to get it." <laughs> Pat Bev trick y'all, man, like you play defense. He don't guard nobody, man. He's just running around doing nothing. The torn meniscus in his right knee ended Westbrook's 2013 postseason after the young star had suited up for every game of his five-year career up to that point. Additional knee issues limited Westbrook to just 46 games during Durant's MVP campaign in 2013-14, and the Thunder lost to the eventual champion Spurs in the West Final. Westbrook and Durant traded places the following year, as KD was suddenly the sideline star due to a foot injury, while Russ exploded as a scorer and essentially became a one-man team in Durant's absence. After averaging 20.1 points per game through the first six years of his career, Westbrook won his first of two career scoring titles in 2014-15, averaging 28.1 points to go along with 8.6 assists, 7.3 rebounds, and 2.1 steals to keep the Thunder afloat without KD for much of the season. Westbrook himself missed a month early in the season with a hand injury, and the Thunder began the season 4-12, but Westbrook willed them back to relevance upon his return. Despite winning 45 games, OKC missed the playoffs for the first time since Westbrook's rookie year, but Westbrook had provided a tease of what was possible with him as the man, 
It didn't necessarily amount to high-level team success, but good God was it ever entertaining and prolific. And Westbrook has it. Westbrook, two more. Thanks taking the timeout because there have been offensive rebounds. The Pacers haven't had the juice to go get them. A career-high 50 points for Russell Westbrook. In addition to finishing fourth in MVP voting in 2015, his first of four consecutive top five finishes, Westbrook also won his first of two straight All-Star Game MVP awards, making him the only player in history to win two straight All-Star MVPs outright. With Westbrook and Durant finally healthy together again in 2015-16, the Thunder got back to dominating. OKC won 55 games, yet finished third in the West behind a 67-win Spurs team that was somehow still getting it done and the record-setting 73-win defending champion Warriors. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! With six-tenths of a second remaining! It appeared Westbrook and the Thunder would get their revenge on Curry's Warriors in the playoffs. After slaying the Spurs in the West Semis, Oklahoma City built a 3-1 series lead over Golden State in the Conference Finals, thanks in large part to Westbrook's 36-point, 11-rebound, 11-assist triple-double in Game 4. Ultimately though, that proved to be the Thunder's last win of the season and the last victory of the Durant-Westbrook partnership. The Warriors stormed back to eliminate the Thunder in seven games, then successfully recruited Durant in 2016 free agency after blowing a 3-1 series lead themselves to LeBron's Cavs in the finals. Durant helped Golden State form a seemingly unbeatable superpower in the Bay, while Westbrook was left to carry the Thunder by himself. And man, did he ever try. What Westbrook accomplished in his first full season without Durant will go down as one of the most memorable individual seasons in NBA history. 57 points, 11 assists, and 13 rebounds. Russ earned his lone MVP award by averaging a triple-double to drag an otherwise overmatched Thunder team to 47 wins and a postseason berth. Adams gives it back to Russ. Deep shot! Get it! What a perfect ending to a historic day! All I can say is, why not? 42 triple-doubles on the season, and he ends the ball game like that? On a team where Steven Adams and Andre Roberson finished second and third in total minutes, Westbrook squeezed every last drop of potential out of his squad averaging a league-leading 31.6 points per game to go along with 10.7 rebounds and 10.4 assists while suiting up for 81 of 82 contests. Five and a half decades after Oscar Robertson had been the last to average a triple-double, and years before future MVPs like Nikola Jokic and Giannis Antetokounmpo began routinely piling them up, it was Westbrook who helped the basketball world reimagine what was possible. That 2016-17 campaign proved to be just the first of three straight seasons and a run of four times in five years that Westbrook averaged a triple-double. Though Durant's Warriors got the last laugh with championships in 2017 and 2018, Westbrook became a folk hero to fans and pundits who bemoaned the era of the super team. With every snarling drive to the basket, every soaring rebound, and every magic-esque assist recorded in his quest to go at it alone, the tireless Westbrook added to his reputation as an almost anti-super team mercenary. Few, if any, stars are beloved forever though. And it was only a matter of time before the same style of play that endeared Westbrook to millions also made him an easy target for criticism. The reigning MVP signed a five-year, $205 million extension in 2017 that, at the time, gave him the biggest contract in basketball history. But even with help from new All-NBA teammate Paul George and aging star Carmelo Anthony, Westbrook couldn't deliver the Thunder ultimate playoff success. The Westbrook-George duo produced back-to-back -back seasons of 48 and 49 wins, but lost first-round series in six and five games, respectively. In three years without Durant, Westbrook averaged a triple-double while the Thunder averaged 48 wins, but OKC went 4-12 and in the playoffs without a single series victory to show for it. Westbrook's quick trigger, despite being one of the worst volume jump shooters ever, came under scrutiny, 
as did his rising turnover rate and waning defensive effort. Suddenly, and not without reason, folks were wondering whether you could win with Westbrook at all, let alone with him still trying to be the man as his age began to show. His unforgettable Thunder tenure came to an end with a 2019 trade to Houston, where he was once again teamed up with Harden, the Beard himself now a perennial MVP candidate. Westbrook's raw numbers dipped with the Rockets, but he enjoyed the most efficient shooting season of his career. Still, his overall impact just wasn't the same. The Rockets finished a disappointing fourth in the West, then barely scraped by his former OKC team, now led by Chris Paul, in a seven-game first-round series before the eventual champion Lakers made quick work of Houston in a five-game second-round clash. The Rockets moved on from Westbrook and his mammoth contract after just one season shipping the veteran to Washington, where Russ was partnered up with Eastern Conference All-Star Bradley Beal. After an uneven start in his third NBA home, Westbrook caught fire down the stretch of the 2020-21 campaign, and eventually finished with yet another season averaging a triple-double. Westbrook fueled a 17-6 run to finish the season that helped propel the Wizards into the playoffs, breaking Robertson's record for most career triple-doubles along the way. The fadeaway. And there it is, history. Russell Westbrook has just surpassed Oscar Robertson. It lasted 47 years, and now Russell Westbrook stands there all alone. A record that was titled untouchable for 47 years. Though Washington was first round cannon fodder for Philadelphia in the playoffs, Westbrook had proven that perhaps he still had something to provide a contender. And LeBron's Lakers came calling with a trade in the summer of 2021. The LA homecoming didn't exactly go as planned. In his 14th season, Westbrook still averaged 18.5 points, 7.4 rebounds, and 7.1 assists while leading the Lakers in total minutes, but a brutal individual start to the year made him the easy scapegoat for a flawed, injury-riddled team's disappointing season. Westbrook was routinely booed at home. And after another poor start to the Lakers 2022-23 season, one which saw him now call former foe Beverly a teammate, Westbrook was once again traded, this time to Utah while in the final year of his contract. The Jazz then bought him out, allowing a 34-year-old Westbrook to reunite with George on the Kawhi Leonard-led Clippers. After proving so invaluable to Oklahoma City, where he earned franchise icon status, Westbrook finds himself on his fifth team in as many seasons. For a good chunk of the last five years, league-wide discussions about the future Hall of Famer have revolved more around what was seen as his albatross of a contract rather than his play on the court. In truth, while Westbrook's driving and playmaking ability still put pressure on opposing defenses and bring some offensive value worth tapping into, his overall impact is a fraction of what it once was, and is often reflected in negative values. His failure to adapt or move much off of the ball, to stop shooting, and to stop turning the ball over hasn't helped Westbrook in his later years. In a strange way though, his uncompromising brand of relentless basketball remains endearing to many. Off the court, Westbrook's fearless style made him a trailblazer among modern athletes, and ushered in a new era of unique NBA fashion trends. For every young star that now finds himself the muse for designers around the world, something is owed to a trend-setting Westbrook. Simultaneously, the fiery take-no-prisoners encore competitor has earned a reputation as an unassuming family man in his personal life. His Why Not Foundation supports community-based education and family service programs, with a directive to inspire children to never give up. Just don't get caught being a reporter asking Westbrook what he perceives to be a nonsensical question. Russ, did you guys lose this game or did the Jazz win this one? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Don't ask me a dumb question you don't know answer to. Uh, if when you look at your line on the box score, how would you grade the line? I don't give a f about the line. We lost. I'm not trying to split you up, but twice in three games, you guys have not played well at all when you've gone to the bench. That's fine. We, say, and I'm just say, trying to figure out what's going say, on. Say, Russell, you ain't played well at all. Say, Russell and the team is, haven't played well. Don't say when Russell goes out, the team don't play well. It don't matter. We in this together. That may that may be, Russell, but I asked Steven a question. Well, and it's, it's a legitimate question. you. Next question. It's a legitimate question. Next question. His on-court legacy is somewhat complicated, especially with the recency bias of the last half decade weighing into the conversation. 
He was rarely efficient as an individual scorer, finishing with an above average true shooting percentage just five times in 15 years. And his decision making wasn't always conducive to winning team basketball in its purest form. But though he went about it in his own, sometimes flawed way, no one can doubt that Russell Westbrook showed up every night and tried his absolute damnedest, entertaining the hell out of us along the way. Though his career isn't over yet, Westbrook's resume made him an easy choice for the NBA's 75th anniversary team. He's an MVP, a nine-time All-Star, a nine-time All-NBA selection, and one of only three players, along with LeBron James and Oscar Robertson, to amass 24,000 career points, 9,000 assists, and 7,000 rebounds. He's a two-time scoring champion, a three-time assists leader, and won gold with Team USA at the 2012 Olympics. Given that he did all of that after a journey that began with him being an undersized afterthought back in Los Angeles, can you blame the guy for responding to every challenge thrown his way with a combative, why not? Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.